in the 2014 NFL Draft Rams select Aaron Donald. Something I've been dreaming about since I was five and it came true, but I got a lot more work to do because I want to be great, so I'm going to work my butt off and know what I got to do, so I'm ready. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year is Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Donald's here on the 6 p.m. Sports Center. Aaron Donald. This is truly a blessing, man. My dad always told me hard work pay off, and I'm blessed and honored to have this right now, so thank you. Let's go, fellas. And hey, we set the tone from the first play to the last play. Let's go. We do that, we dominate, we win this game. Let's go. Big dogs on three. One, two, three. It's week seven in the National Football League. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Los Angeles Rams. One of Pittsburgh's favorite sons, Aaron Donald, who will go up against the team he grew up rooting for. Whatever day. Why not be great? Why not be great? Why not be great? Florida State visiting Pittsburgh. First ACC game for Pitt, and the students were pumped. 25 of 27 for 356 yards and five total touchdowns. Four coming through the air as he becomes the first quarterback in the last 10 years in his debut to throw for three touchdowns and rush for one in the first half. Rashad Green finished with eight catches for 126 and a touchdown, while Nick O'Leary added three scores. The bright spot for Pittsburgh was senior wide receiver Devin Street, who finished with six catches for 141 yards. I used to watch film, come in early, Coach Nooks would be in there, my D-line coach watching film. I'll break down film by myself right here, take a nap right here before meetings, and then get the day started. I remember working, trying to get to where I'm at now. Crazy, man, time fly. After careful consideration, the winner of the 2013 Bronco Nagurski Trophy, Aaron Donald, Pittsburgh. All these trophies is in LA in my office. The Lombardi, Merrick, the Outland, and the Nagurski. This was the first one I won on my dad's birthday. This is that trophy I won on his birthday. I wanted to say happy birthday to my dad. Um, got, you, got you a birthday gift. <laughs> I had an opportunity to leave early my junior year, but I didn't like the grade I got. At the time, my girlfriend was pregnant with my daughter, so I ain't had a lot on my mind, but I stayed. I want to be all American. And then came back working, was working with Wayne. Started breaking down film a lot more. I learned that from Coach Noakes, my D-line coach, when I was here my last two years. Just put a lot more time into it. Just with a lot more focus when I had my daughter. It's just all that came out of it, and I just got addicted to working. <laughs> That's what all this. I just got addicted to it. Yeah, I mean, I heard about him because, just because he's a local guy, but um, I would say Aaron was overlooked, undersized, you know maybe didn't fit the, fit the mold of, of what teams were looking for in a three technique. And I think he had maybe three offers, including Akron and, and Toledo and then Pitt. You didn't expect him to come in here and make waves right away or have a lot of expectations on him right away. Uh, that changed rather quickly though once he got on campus because uh, he was three times the player that anyone pegged him to be. He's hit, he's gonna be sacked. And guess who is on the scene? The Outland, Lombardi, Nagurski, Bibnerich. What was the other one? He won them all, and he got the sack. We're talking Aaron Donald. The St. Louis Rams are serious about building their defense with the 13th pick. They go with Aaron Donald, defensive tackle from Pittsburgh. If you look at what they got now on paper, the Rams are going to be a force. They've got Chris Long across the front. They've got Langford. They've got Quinn. You throw Donald to this mix. In college, he won the Nagurski, the Bednarik, Outland, Lombardi. All he didn't win was a Grammy and an Oscar. He won almost every award you could in college football. Very decorated. Provides a lot of punch. Not a 300-pounder. He had problems getting above 290 and holding that weight but he plays like a big man. He plays like Warren Sapp at times, shooting gaps, can take on double teamers. He will bull rush you, has good hands, short, compact arms, and he powerfully built, can get into offensive linemen's chest. Excellent pick for St. Louis, especially wrong that defensive front. I'm now, living my dream through Aaron. And the 2017 AP Defensive Player of the Year is... 
and Donna. It's still um, surreal to me. Everybody around us makes a big deal out of it, but it still doesn't seem real. He's not famous to us. He's Aaron, you know? He's just who he is. It's surreal. It's still surreal, you know, um, to accomplish something like that, you know, with so many great players that, that won that trophy and, and definitely only in my fourth year. So um, it's a dream come true. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. We just got to go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. What D lineman? Remind you, Warren Sapp of Warren Sapp today. Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. It ain't even funny. But he does it in a different way. Yes. Yeah, he does it so much more finesse. But, boy, when he get to that quarterback, boy, he nasty with it when he get to that quarterback. Boy, he I big quick. Oh, boy, I mean, he bang him fast. Boy, get Sapp, him let me tell you the first, Sapp, let me tell you the first time I saw him. The first time I saw Aaron Donald, I'm looking at him, and I'm like, I look like Aaron Donald. But, no, nah, he too little to be Aaron Donald. I uh, ain't, no, ain't no way that ain't no way he gonna play D tackle. That, 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 that little the size of the dog, Shannon. It's yeah. the size of the dog. It's that bite. Yeah. So I'm looking at him. I was like, nah, nah. He too. He too. He he, he too little. Man, man I watched that joke in the game. Low man wins. Man, the no. way I think the thing is, Skip. I'll uh, skip. Sap. The thing that he can do that you guys can do and the really good ones can do, they can bend and they can turn the corner. See, a lot of people, they got to run that big old arc. But but this dude can run that tight. He can get past you and then dip and then bend, and he's right there on the quarterback. It's definitely around that corner. Like Tupac used to say, baby. Like Bruce Smith used to drag knuckles when he came oh, on man. that thing. DT, that lead, Von Miller. Oh, no. No. That's, that's an art to be able to play with that kind of leverage and to – and you know this, Sal, more times than not, you're getting double. The center going to hit you, and then he's going to oh. leave you for the guard. Uh, ain't no, ain't no, oh, I got it one they on play one. ping pong. They playing ping pong with you, dog. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and it ain't triple the points for you either. Number 92, Junior, Anquin Barnes. Anquan Barnes was born on October 21st in Montgomery, Alabama. He transferred to Colorado as an undergraduate in 2024 from the University of Alabama with two years to play too. He spent three years at Alabama from 2021 through 2023. During the conclusion of his freshman year in 2021, he redshirted. In 2022, he did not see any game action. In 2023, as a sophomore, he played in two games against Middle Tennessee and Chattanooga. If you would like to know more about Anquan Barnes, I have a full profile on my channel. Number 90, senior, Torian Carter. Torian Carter was born on March 5th in Mansfield, Texas. He comes to Colorado for the 2024 season as an undergraduate transfer from the University of Arkansas. Carter was at Arkansas from 2019 through 2023. In his time at Arkansas, he played in 33 games, making five starts. He did not play during the 2019 season. He played in eight games in 2020 and made one start against LSU. He totaled 11 tackles, four solo, and one pass breakup. He made two stops in the season opener and broke up a pass against Georgia. According to Pro Football Focus, he played in 155 defensive and 10 special team snaps. During the 2021 season, he appeared in all 13 games, totaling 24 tackles, three tackles for loss, one sack, and one pass breakup. He registered five games with multiple tackles. According to Pro Football Focus, he played in 262 snaps with 244 at defensive line and 18 on special teams. He made a career high six tackles and a half tackle for loss in the season opening win over Rice. He missed the entire 2022 season after enduring a knee injury near the end of spring practice. In 2023, he played in all 12 games and started the first four. He totaled 25 tackles, six unassisted, three and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. 
do it four minutes until the half. Arkansas will get the ball to begin the second half. Jenkins under pressure and sack. Torian Carter. And the rushing attack has gone south without him helping. Number 99, senior Shane Hoax. Shane Hoax is from Dayton, Ohio. He was a graduate transfer to Colorado from Dartmouth for the 2023 season. He is in his final year of playing eligibility. Dartmouth College is a private Ivy League research university in Hanover, New Hampshire. Dartmouth has been considered among the most prestigious undergraduate colleges in the United States since the early 1900s. At Dartmouth, from 2019 through the 2022 seasons, he played in 22 games, starting 20, totaling 87 total tackles, 14 for a loss, eight and a half sacks, one pass deflection, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. He was named to the All Ivy League second team for the 2022 season by the coaches and Phil Steele. During that season, he played in and started all 10 games, registering 53 total tackles, eight and a half for a loss, four and a half sacks, a pass deflection, and a forced fumble. At Colorado, during the 2023 season, he was given the L on the jersey to designate him as a leader on the team. He played in all 12 games, starting in nine. After starting the first eight, he did not start again until the final game against Utah. He finished the season with 29 total tackles, good for second on the team for defensive linemen, 12 solo tackles, and one pass breakup. His best game of the season came against Utah in the regular season finale with nine total tackles, three unassisted. If you would like to know more about Shane Coates, I have a full profile on my channel. Number 88, Junior, Amari McNeil. Amari McNeil is from Suwannee, Georgia. He transferred to Colorado from the University of Tennessee for the 2023 season and currently has two years of playing eligibility remaining. The Tennessee Volunteers football program is in the SEC East Division and home games are played at Neyland Stadium that holds a capacity of 101,915. McNeil was at Tennessee for two seasons, 2021 and 2022. He saw action in one game during the 2021 season against South Alabama. He saw action in six games during the 2022 season, registering three tackles and one pass breakup. At Colorado in 2023, he played in all 12 games, starting in four. He recorded 31 total tackles, seven tackles for loss, three sacks, one forced fumble, one quarterback hurry, and one pass breakup. Amari McNeil has also been recognized for his academic achievements at CU. If you would like to know more about Amari McNeil, I have a full profile on my channel. Pressure coming, screen to Coleman inside, but it's broken up. McNeil broke off his rush. Amari McNeil disrupted the play. So now you're gonna have Arizona Here's Borgay. He's not going to have enough time for that. down and just gets blown up in the backfield. Ball oh, prize oh, loose. Oh, oh, oh. That is McNeil that laid the wood. Yeah. Let's go. We just got to go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. Number 97, senior, Chidozi Wonkwo. Chidozi Wonkwo was born on April 29th in Washington, D.C. He attended high school at Foster in Houston, Texas, where, in addition to being named 10-5A defensive MVP as a junior and senior in football, he was also a two-time Class 5A state champion in wrestling as a sophomore and senior, and a four-time district champion and three-time regional champion in wrestling. Wonkwo concluded his wrestling career with a 102-5 record. For college, he attended 
the University of Houston for four seasons from 2020 through 2023. As a freshman at Houston, he played in eight games with six starts and was the first true freshman to start on the University of Houston's defensive line since Ed Oliver in 2016. He played in 40 games at Houston with 33 starts, including at least six starts in each of his four seasons there. He finished that season with 11 tackles and one and a half tackles for loss. In 2021, he appeared in 11 games, making nine starts, including each of the final eight games, with 22 tackles, including two sacks. In 2022, he started 12 games at nose guard, 637 snaps, and had 36 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and one sack. In 2023, he played in nine games, starting in six, with 25 tackles, 13 unassisted, a career-high five tackles for loss, one sack, and one blocked kick. He had a season-high nine tackles and two tackles for loss in the 41-39 win over West Virginia on October 12, 2023. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. Uh. I go the hardest. I bring the pain. Not what she used to. It's all part of the game. Yeah. I just gotta go hard. Uh. I just gotta go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Yeah. Oh yeah, the beast back, adrenaline pumping through my veins, can't relax, original, I am not the same as these cats, I sting them if they never ever mind and they beeswax. Number 52, Senior, Chaz Wallace. Chaz Wallace is from Glen Arden, Maryland. He transferred to Colorado in 2023 from Old Dominion University. He has one year of playing eligibility remaining. He played at Old Dominion for the 2021 and 2022 seasons. He played in 23 career games throughout the two seasons at Old Dominion, totaling 45 tackles, two and a half sacks, and four tackles for a loss. He appeared in all 13 games during his freshman season at defensive tackle and totaled 26 tackles and two sacks. In 2022, he played in 10 games, earning his first career start at Georgia State. He registered 19 tackles, two tackles for loss, half a sack, and a blocked kick. At Colorado, during the 2023 season, he played in 10 games, starting in the final four games of the season. He recorded 11 total tackles and one and a half total sacks on the season. He posted career-high five tackles against Utah in the final game of the year. Yep, briskly along the sidelines. Schlenbecker is the, the setback that here's Cam Ward. Now he's in trouble and down. First sack of the night for Colorado, Chaz Wallace, a junior from Glenarden, Maryland, Old Dominion transfer, comes in with the sack. Wallace was on a beeline for that one, man. He was coming off the edge and no confusion about his game. Had an outside game, an ET stunt, and he comes and from the inside position around the edge and bears down on Ward. Nails it. That's great athleticism right there, redirecting and getting all that weight turned opposite direction. Who's you work for right here? Who's you work for? All that training you did. All everything you do is for this right here. Come on, hey. Come on. You're living the dream. How bad you want it? How bad you want it? How bad you want it? Make the big play, huh? Make the big play. Huh? Controlled aggression. Controlled aggression. Come on. Controlled aggression. Controlled aggression. All day, baby. Yep. All day. Controlled aggression. Be great. Be great. Be great. Nothing less. Come on. Lock in. Lock in. Come on. Come on. What you here for? What you work for right here? What you train for right here? Come on. That'd be great. You hear me? That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. The main reason why I like to go to the facility at night, I like to break down film by myself. Because sometimes I might watch a play 
damn near be stuck on a play for five minutes just studying somebody. Because what I what I do, I study tendencies off mm-hmm. offense. I, I study who I'm going against. I, so I'm gonna study the guard, east guard, and then I'm gonna study the center. And then I'm just gonna watch them play. I'm just gonna study what they do, what they losing with, what they winning with. What I can see, they can give little tendencies they're going to give that it's going to be, you know, certain pass or certain things they're going to do to make, help me play faster, right? Then I start breaking down a whole group as a, as a whole. So I'm going to see how this tackle, do he choke down a lot? Most of the time when I pluck, meaning the tackle, before the tackle block out to that end, he's going to punch down on me to close up that B gap. Then you got that center sliding to you, which is going to close up the A gap. So it's like you got to work power and work off that because, you know, you ain't no – Ain't no cross chop because he's punching you. Ain't no inside move because you got that center running over right now and trying to hit you in your hip. So now you got to figure out, okay, we even got to work a game or I got to start working power, right? So so just breaking them tendencies down and, and watching it to the point where I, I, they're going to block me like this so I get an idea of, you know, how good this group is really as a whole. So sometimes you might watch film. Even if it's an offensive line that's all beat up and hurt, you know, they're going to have a lot of backups. I'd be like, I, I know if I get a one-on-one, I'm going to win, but... but I don't got too many of my opportunities is going to come. So I got to find different ways. And that's one of the main reasons why I like to go to my D-line coach and watch with him because it's like, all right, this is the game that I think going to work. If we do this a certain game and at this certain look and he ping pong ideas off that, we're able to, you know, help each other, you know, to try to find ways to get me freed up. So it's just, it's a process, man. Rams have it and the Rams win it. Now, if this is the Bible, it's the gospel. Aaron Donald, there's a bigger gap between Aaron Donald and the second best player at his position than there is at any other position between one and two. We're talking about the defensive player of the year, 28 sacks in three seasons, led the league in quarterback hits at his positions, tackle for loss, and on and on and on and on. Aaron Donald is one of the greatest players we've ever seen. He's in the same conversations, the Lawrence Taylors of the world, the Mike Singletary. I mean, one of the greatest defensive players we've ever seen. My dad always talked about hard work pay off. And as a kid, you're like, okay, dad. <laughs> and when you start seeing that actually pay off for you and seeing the outcome of just doing that, the, the work behind closed doors, and that, the, the, nobody see. You know, one day when I'm all, when I'm gone off this earth, I'm leaving, I'm leaving a legacy behind for my kids to see and you know, for the world to see it. So it's like, you're gonna be alive forever. Set up a screen for Bernard. Hello, Aaron Donald. Punched loose by Aaron Donald. He's one of the time. Aaron Donald takes care of that. Yeah. Let's go. We just gotta go hard. 